Hi, I'm Heinbach. It's good to have you back. The following video is a live stream recording I did for Thomann's Keys and Frequencies. And I talk about a topic that's dear to me. And that is how I compartmentalize my studio into little islands. Enjoy. Hey everybody, nice to see you here. Ah, I hope it looks good and sounds good. And uh, yeah, I, we're gonna do two things today. And the first thing is I'm going to talk a little bit about the concept of islands or how I compartmentalize my studio. And I'm gonna go to three of those. The third one is very new for me. I just started this this week. So <laughs> this is gonna be an extra fun one. And after that, I'll answer all your questions. So I'll try to go these concisely and quickly and uh, then that there's enough time for a Q&A because if I uh, go um, to the chat all the time while I'm talking, I'll be like, ah, oh, I'll be a scatterbrain, I think is the English expression. So what are islands? I came up with the name from an interview I had with Chris Hansen of Spitfire Audio. And he, uh, he's, he coined the word environments in the studio. And I really like that word environments. But then I thought, it isn't really an environment. It is something more like an island, because an island connotes to me something that's pleasant, pleasurable. And on an island, you get all the things that you need, at least in my dream islands, you know, with the with coconuts come falling down and you get rum and stuff like that. So that's, <laughs> and a beach. So everything is already there. So the whole, one of the questions that I get the most is how do I even manage all the gear that I have? Because it's it's gotten quite a lot over the time, especially since starting the channel and I'm getting double incentivized to keep on acquiring new stuff, playing with it and showing it to you guys. Um, and the way I go about these is by building these little parts in my studio before I even integrate stuff into the whole setup. I've got this little thing. If you, some of you watched my videos, you might have seen when there's a silver road case that is my, I'm going to experiment with something before I put it in the whole setup. And during that time, I started to realize that I feel really creative when I've got a single piece just surrounded by maybe an effect and a four track so I can quickly record something. That's something that really works with me. This very concentrated, concise workflow where it's not like, 24 channels and just a simple thing. So I started building these all over my studio. And I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these, which are able to make music on their own. Some are even able to record on their own. So, but most of them are even co are connected to the mixer. So in theory, I could probably at some point connect all these islands and form one huge continent. But I don't need that power fantasy <laughs> in my life right now. I really like to keep it simple and yeah, uh, fun for me. So the first island, I can't go through all of these because we only got a short time. The first island that I want to show you is basically my life island. This is the setup that I played live. And by playing live, I mean I played this particular a version of the setup only once last year and yeah then of course we all know what happened so let's move over to there and what you see here is my Seat Lombarde setup this is actually how my channel started I played these lovely wooden synthesizers that look a bit like toys and I tried to get good uh, and playing them. Instead of making a track, I would put the camera up and pretend I was playing a show. And then I would upload those, those, uh, that show. And that's the start of this channel, the Weimar sessions. And over time, I still kept playing these. And every time I play live, the top wooden parts that you see up there are what is I'm using. And you can see there's a little black pedal there. And that pedal is a Neun Aber Slate, which is one of the most natural sounding reverb and harmonizers I've found. And this works particularly well with the Seat Lombardis setup. Now, the two Seat Lombardi instruments that you see here are 
the Coco Quantus, which is a looper and modulation source and can be so many things. Basically, it's the Cog Triton of experimental music workstations. And underneath you find the Zidrax, which is kind of a triangle synth playable via touch and it sounds lovely and wooden. And then there is an idiophone there. That's the uh, Bellinger E kalimba, which is an electric kalimba that I like to play because I always like to put something electroacoustic in these setups. And the big new thing <laughs> is the Pulsar 23. This kind of replaced the plumbeter in my live sets simply because it has a different tone to the Seattle Lombard instruments and that gives me a different range. While all the Seattle Lombard instruments have got a very lovely wooden quality to them, the Pulsar just sounds like this industrial heavy machine. And I really like combining it and I like that it's so odd with the crocodile clips. Early Seattle Lombard all used crocodile clips and later only went banana. So there's a lot of options to interpatch this. And when I connect this particular setup to some other things, to another island, that's just blinking away in the background. Uh, here you can see there's the Suntrax and up here is a, wall, a, a mini wall of test equipment. The Pulsar acts as a hub because it can divide all those voltages and easily with a crocodile clip I can stick on any cable. So let me just show you how it sounds. I hope it sounds halfway decent. If not, I'm recording this so I can upload it at a some later point in good quality or Toman can.
<laughs> oh, okay. I hope this uh, sounded as fun as it uh, as it was for me right now. So um, I forgot one thing, of course, because this is my life setup. There's one tool I haven't mentioned and I should mention because it's absolutely amazing. Boom, I think, from Otto. Is it Boom? BIM and BAM. BAM is the reverb, BIM is the delay, and BOOM is the compressor. And this is such an awesome tool to tame some of the noisy high end of the Seat Lombard Coco Quantos, but also to add this almost sidechain-like compression. And it can sidechain if you want to. So absolutely essential tool in my live sets. And that's one thing that is unique to this setup um, is of course, a compressor is super handy when playing live just to protect the audience. And oh, I'm already halfway through the time. <laughs> okay, so um, so questions in uh, then, but I just get, let's go over to the other setup that, that you can see blinking right behind me here. So, and what you see there is actually two of these islands. To the left, we've got an under construction hyper experimental setup based on a Hewlett Packard. Uh, fantastic tape machine with so many speeds and oscillator controllable when a track absolutely crazy machine and then there's an australian telecommunications learning modular system banana patchable a brilliant kia filter and some other things this there's like a little the most out there test equipment things that i could find are there and this is going to be a music concrete uh, sound um sound treatment on tape kind of setup which i'm developing but the one thing i want to talk now is the one that's headed by the tr707 up there and those are the drums underneath two synthesizers that work as atmosphere synthesizers and that is all connected to this four track uh, four track down here which is one of my favorites tascam 464 which i use for tape loops and if i want to if i want that sound to record also underneath and i'm going to move the camera like after i played this there are two things that i want to show you and one is a fantastic old yamaha ensemble mixer which just sounds amazing so it makes the tier 606 real a uh, tier 707 sorry really bite and it has one of the nicest spring reverbs which sounds like the roland uh, spring reverb that's in the space echo in there and right underneath is just the tiniest piece of test equipment setup that I can find uh, and uh, Cork SQ1 uh, sequences that. And for space, I'm using two things, the Specular Tempus by GFI Systems, the little white pedal white uh, right up front, which is all over my upcoming record called Landfill Totems. Also, I really love this harmonizing spacing <laughs> reverb, absolutely amazing. And the microcosm, which in this setup acts as like uh, my even tight H3000 also. So this setup is, <sighs> it's both rhythmical, but it can be ambient. And it's just so nice to stand there and work with it. So I'm gonna uh, head over there and play you a little piece. <laughs>
Okay, so I couldn't figure out how to get the camera back on the thing. I hope uh, I got to show you some things. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's what I what was down there is a Tektronix TM500. I'm wrapped up in my cables here. Tektronix TM500 modular system with two AF501 filters, and these make the bass. And I put these in because I had this assembled and it sounded way too traditional for me. So I had to find a way to get this little modular rack of test equipment in there. And the Cog SQ1 is fantastic to sequence it. And the clock runs from the tier 707 through there. And you could see by the side there was this little no coast and no control. I simply didn't have the time to integrate them into this and I thought, oh, too much time already anyway. So this is a very inspiring setup for me where I can do this weird disco vibe. Oh, and why the TR-707 sounds like it sounds is because I also got bored by the standard sound of it. So what I did was I ran through Metasonics, pa no, not Metasonics, Electroharmonics pedals. The Flanger Hoax, which is an amazing pedal and you should all buy, and the original frequency analyzer and that makes it sound weirdly wonky okay so before we go to the Q&A last setup and I'm really excited about this because it's something that I only realized I could put together when I was working two days ago on the documentary soundtrack and it's a setup based in the digital audio workstation and what made this possible is that I've now made a bunch of plugins and some are coming out now and as I put these together I realized wow this is actually super fun and it brought my love back for producing inside the digital audio workstation. I've got a standard setup now which has two of my instruments fundamental this synthesizer I did with Sonic Lab which is based on a piece of test equipment in channel one and this sounds like this <laughs> And on channel 2, we got the new Spitfire audio library that comes out on the 8th. And that's basically test equipment based. It's from statues that I made. And it just sounds lovely. They made such a good job with these sounds. And I'm using Things Motor, the plugin that just came out this week, to combine the two so they keep bouncing next to each other and to add some analog feel. And the drums are also Spitfire audio library. Valhalla played my favorite reverb on the aux, it's always there. On the bus, I, forever, and I still use it even though I've got some nice analog compressors, is the Klanghelm MGUC Varimu style compressor. Absolutely love it. And this setup is now my, yeah, when I start just, uh, just my template, my basic template when I start up Ableton Live and I want to record not something external, but work on something within the door. And it's so refreshing for me and brought back my love for, yeah, working, uh, working with that. It only took me making five plugins to, to realize that. These are three islands that I built. And now I think we've got only five minutes for questions. So I'm gonna look at the chat. Please uh, ask away. What was that HP tape unit that you referred to? That's the HP 3686, I think. And it's a huge, heavy machine made for instrumentation recording. So you can record control voltages on eight channels, but also audio, and you can mix that. How to get that sweater? I think that's just something I bought off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Spring Reverb, that's from the Yamaha Ensemble Mixer ES60. Fantastic unit, can really comment that. How do you guarantee interoperability between all these devices, uh, Dr. John? Oh, I... Uh, that's interesting. I, I just started a, a, um, a video on Monday will come out where I talk about how I finally start to interpatch synthesizers with test equipment, something I'd always forbidden myself because because of the level difference, impedance difference, and because I wanted to really work with test equipment in a philosophical sense. But now that I started to do this sometimes a bit, perf probably dangerous thing in parts, it's actually fun. And that's a video that comes out Monday. Uh, how do you feel having jacked up the use price of Quadros by like 100%? Well, if it costs now 60, <laughs> I mean, uh, these have been like, cheap forever so i don't feel bad i wonder sometimes about about stuff like uh the zuiko which after posting now 
people are like from 350 or 200 it went to now costing 2300 or something crazy or the maestro synthesizer 150 250 and now 2200 that's madness but that's sadly how the market works if there's something where somebody discovers it and shows it people are like oh okay got got to have um dust collector Jürgen Bassin. yes i love it it's right here uh do we just buy test equipment and try it out and resell if it does not sound good resell would be nice there's not much of a resell market no what i do actually like about the stuff that i don't i put it into art projects so these statues that are made from all the stuff that i couldn't fit in my studio and uh, there's a video on my channel called landfill totems where you can see uh, what i did with them so even if they are not working i can still put them to something that's that is in some way art and yeah it's fun for me uh what do you record to robin vincent i record to uh, two things i record to a quarter inch telefunken m15 tape machine and i record to uh you an rme ufx2 i think the same one cuckoo uses also which is my favorite interface of all time just works flawlessly uh what piece of test equipment surprised you the most sonically the most jaw-dropping experience was the Rode and Schwarz UBM. So I knew this would sound good. So it wasn't much of a surprise, but when I actually heard it, I was absolutely surprised. But the one that surprised me in the sense of th why is this in there are all these a HP 3870 uh, series of um, error detectors, pattern generators, which are very loud units with a big fan and some smell like cat piss, but one video I made called the Satis Draw Machine captures that. And for that library with Spitfire, I was able to cook so many beautiful like tick, 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 sounds out of them. It was a pleasure because this is not musical sound. This is basically code running through an ISDN line and then some something is waiting for it to receive it. So that's amazing to me. Uh, how much will the Spitfire library be? Uh, oh, I think oh, uh, it's on it's on the RA Recordings website. I don't know the price yet, but I know that if you buy the library and the album that comes with it, you now get a free cassette tape also. So Berna is lovely. Yeah, yeah. Berna is absolutely lovely. I got Berna one. Uh, I think, uh, from Christopher Oro. Berna one, I bought that like when it came out just to learn about how this works back in 2005 or 2006 when this came out. I was, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, do you have a main mixer to route, to, to route all your islands? Yes. This is uh, uh, Ramsa VRS4424, which I got for 300 bucks around the corner and it's pristine. This is known as a mixer that has been used in dub a lot as far as I learned later on, and that explains why I love it so much, because dub music is one of the most pleasurable musics for me to listen to. So this is a nice analog board, and I'm so happy to have it here, and yeah, it works flawlessly. Knocking on wood. What's above the Omnicord? Uh, that's the Zuiko ST50. Uh, videos on my channel it's a poetry trainer meant for players that want to rehearse the reciting of traditional chinese and early japanese poetry so it's in a japanese scale and uh yeah it's a very specific tool from the 19 this is from the 1990s i think but it's a whole series of these things that date back to the 1960s and 70s uh, that was meant for that exact purpose accompany the reciting of poetry and these things musically very very beautiful oh your session time has elapsed okay so I'm, i don't want to steal anybody's time from anybody thank you all for being here and uh yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna i'm just gonna thank you all for being here it's been lovely and yeah i hope there will be a decent version of everything up on <sighs> youtube somewhere thank you all you're awesome and bye bye <laughs>